what's up guys, I'm KBHD here, and this is your first look at the brand new Samsung Galaxy S20 and Galaxy S20 Plus. The S20 and S20 Plus. And to me, this is actually one of the biggest jumps up I've seen Samsung take with their phones. Literally everything you can think of is upgraded, and they've taken the biggest jumps in the most important areas of the phone. So the screen, the battery, and the cameras. So let's start with the screen. These are now 6.2 inch and 6.7 inch displays respectively, and they are 120 Hertz Quad HD OLED displays. So super high resolution, HDR plus, and super responsive high refresh rate screens. This is the train I've been telling you guys flagships are all gonna get on in 2020. And to match that super high refresh rate, Samsung has also doubled the touch sensitivity to a 240 Hertz sample rate, meaning it responds to touch input twice as fast. And the whole new speed difference is instantly noticeable. Now, obviously it's still tough for me to show you guys in this a 30 FPS YouTube video, but yeah, literally everything from swiping around the UI to opening and closing apps and scrolling and eventually, of course, gaming, everything will look and feel smoother. And I think Samsung has also tweaked some of these animations in one UI to be a bit shorter and snappier too. So you can easily tell it feels way smoother than 60 Hertz. And I can actually tell the difference versus 90 as well, which I've gotten used to. So I'm super happy about the screen. And on top of all that, there's now uh, the center hole punch you can see, which I actually prefer because unlike the corners, there's usually nothing being blocked in the middle. And it's now actually flatter, which is so unlike Samsung because they've always been the ones to push the curved glass melting over the sides. But hey, new decade, new Samsung. Now this display doesn't melt over the edge nearly as much or kind of at all. It's much more flat in my opinion, much more usable. And they still have the ultrasonic fingerprint reader, of course, underneath the display. So they're not trying to make these phones super razor thin, which is great. They're actually just a tiny bit thicker. There's still 25 watt fast charging with that charger included in the box and wireless charging too. Uh, and while we're at it, let's hit the specs. Boom, there you go. High-end CPU, an insane 12 gigabytes of RAM on all of them, expandable storage, IP68 certified. I mean, these phones are complete on the spec sheet. Not quite as wild as the S20 Ultra, but still no big shortcomings as you'd expect from a Samsung flagship. And the entire lineup is also all 5G capable, but I don't think this is quite a game changer as much as some people will try to make it out to be. Uh, you know, the S20 and S20 Plus, they will not do millimeter wave, so only sub six 5G. And so it'll say 5G in the corner, but we talked about this in a previous video. It's only gonna be up to about 20% faster than good 4G on a good day. And so I wouldn't buy this phone just for the 5G. Even a lot of the little stuff they changed, I'm liking too. They changed the button situation. So now the buttons have moved back over to the right-hand side and the dedicated Bixby button is gone. Uh, they're also pretty lightweight phones as well. Despite their size and the bigger batteries, I was impressed with how good they feel in the hand and how light they are compared to some other big phones. And Samsung's One UI 2.0 has some neat improvements as well. Now, I'd be lying if I said I loved it. Um, it's still far from my favorite flavor of Android, but there's still things like building a zoom preview into the camera app now. So when you're zoomed in super far, you still get that preview in the top left of what the hell you're zooming into, which is super useful. And there's other stuff like Spotify now integrated into Bixby routines and HD Google Duo video chat built natively into the dialer and some other stuff like the subtle new animations. And there's also a new single take mode in the camera. It's like the opposite of pro mode. Basically, instead of you doing all the hard work of taking several photos and videos, you just hit the shutter button once and point it at some action and it'll decide for you when to take photos and videos based on, you know, when eyes are open and faces are smiling and stuff. Uh, seems kind of cool, but this isn't something I think I'll ever use. Call me crazy, but I like taking the photos.